It's time for Good Energy and I'm Dr. Julie and welcome to Bodyful Day 273. Today we are talking about shoulder pain and the senses. This is day one of shoulder pain in the senses and we are talking about the sense of sight. Now, <laughs> there is very little about the sense of sight that is related to shoulder pain, but we'll work through it. As you know, I always take the first day of a series hijack it and we talk about how the how shoulder pain can be related to the healing equation and how you can use the healing equation to heal shoulder pain all right so let's start with the basics take a deep breath in and release on this next deep breath in i want you to expand in the belly expand in the chest expand in the sinuses and then tuck your tailbone. Take a deep breath in and release. And since we are talking about we're relating the sense of sight to shoulder pain, I want you to think about seeing yourself in the sh in the in the mirror when you have shoulder pain. How we kind of do, you know, this or this or this or this how we kind of hold ourselves differently. And I want you to think about holding yourself differently and take a deep breath in. And release. So shoulder pain, I, don't, I think I've shared this before, is one of my favorite, 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 favorite things to work on in my office. I love shoulder pain. I don't know why I'm a glutton for punishment, but I love shoulder pain. And the reason why is that it is so complicated. There are so many levels to it. It is not simply my low back hurts. It's my shoulder hurts. And the cool thing about the shoulder is that there are, there are many, 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 many joints that go into making shoulder pain. There are the cranial bones because some of the the muscles that attach from the top of the head attach in and around the shoulder blade. There are the neck bones. There are the vertebrae in the in the neck because those that's where the nerves go that run into the shoulder. There are the thoracics. There are the ribs. There are the collarbones. There are the shoulder blades themselves. And of course, there is the good old humeral head. All that goes into a shoulder problem. And then top off that, not only does all that go into the shoulder problem, but if you've got sinus issues, if you've got chest and lung issues, if you've got a heart issue, if you've got a gallbladder issue or a liver issue, they all can radiate into the shoulder. The shoulder is a fantastically messed up, messy part of the anatomy. And the fact that it functions normally so often is really freaking amazing. <laughs> so when you have shoulder pain, you shouldn't think of it as, oh, I have shoulder pain, but you should think of it as, oh, all those other times I haven't had shoulder pain. It's amazing how it stays so healthy. So what are we gonna talk about? So we have talked about rib pain in the senses before, but shoulder pain isn't just rib pain. It can be part of that. Those ribs run in the front on the pec muscles. They run behind the, the um, shoulder blade. They, and those ribs can influence shoulder pain, but we're also talking about all these other things. So there are a lot of structural stressors. So when we're thinking about the equation to have energy for a good shoulder or energy to repair shoulder pain or to heal shoulder pain equals good energy and minus stressors, there are so many structural variables that it comes into, that come into play that can change how we function. So I want to kind of break them up and talk about them just a little bit. So what we have first is the is are the ribs. We've talked about rib pain in the senses and we've talked about how you can kind of push on ribs in the front and have relief in the back. The same thing goes with shoulder pain. You can push on ribs in the front and get better range of motion uh, with your shoulder 
if you find the right one. So we've got ribs, we've got the collarbone. The collarbone connects, collarbone connects to the shoulder blade. And that's in the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint. And if you lean too, a lot, too much on that, or if you've been like doing delicate archeology span work somewhere uh, outside the house for too long, or you hit the floor with that shoulder, or you get hit by a linebacker with that shoulder, you can get what's called a chromioclavicular separation or an AC separation, which is something that they will actually sometimes put back together. But you could also have one that is so fine that it doesn't, that it doesn't show up on an x-ray, but it affects how those muscles attach and you get clicking and clunking. And so what we're working on is how can we kind of put some good energy into those joints how can we put good energy into the organs underneath? How can we put good energy into our neck? How can we put good energy into our head? And that is gonna be a really complicated day or complicated week because we can touch on each of those things when we cover the rest of the senses. But of course, sight, there's not much we can do with sight other than the fact that sometimes when you have shoulder pain, it is very obvious because your bra strap always falls down or you see that your shoulder is tucked forward or you see that your shoulder is up a little bit more or you see that your your trapezius muscles look a little altered um, and those can be all signs that you have shoulder stress so can you use the visual field to calm the shoulder to the extent Again, we talk about this very globally to the extent that your shoulder pain is due to a stressor from the central is from the sympathetic nervous system. You've gone into fight or flight mode. We can use the visual system to calm the body. We can calm the eyes. We can calm, have calm colors. The visual system can calm the sympathetic nervous system, but it really isn't a component in the shoulder except except, and this is sort of cheating, we're, we're recruiting the kinesthetic system again, eye movements affect the cranial bones, and sometimes the cranial bones can influence your shoulder. So how do you play around with that? So if your shoulder hurts, you can try range of motion. So how high can you get your shoulder, or how high can you get your arm before it starts to hurt? And then you can look around the clock. So you can start at 12 o'clock and say, hey, does my shoulder improve? And actually, my shoulder feels much better when I look up at 12 o'clock. Hey, that's pretty cool. And then you can work your way around. So work your way up and to the right at the three o'clock level, down into the right, six o'clock level, down into the left, nine o'clock level, and up into the left. And you can do that and see if it changes how your shoulder functions. Now, how do you fix that? Do you just sit there and look? You can, but you can also think about, okay, well, when I look up and up straight up, what is going on? What am I doing that is actually making that good energy in? In some somatic research or in some somatic work, so somatic healing work, the actual act of looking up or looking to different parts of your visual field can trigger what's called a ventral vagal response. The vagus nerve calms the body, and if you look in a particular direction, it can calm the system and get you good energy in so that you can start working on range of motion and figuring out how to strengthen that shoulder or how to make it function better. So that is my connection with sight. Join me here tomorrow as we start to look into the different components of sensory system and shoulder pain and how can we recruit those sensory systems and what kind of stressors do those sensory systems have on shoulder pain. All right, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's very chilly here. It's only going to get colder. So hopefully we will be able to still do this with the, uh, with the phone outside before the battery goes dead. Have a wonderful day. Let's finish this off. Take a deep breath in and release.
Have a great day.